Hello, I'm Andrew Pritchard. Thank you for watching today's Corn Belt Regional Forecast, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. We're starting off with a look at the jet stream. The wind's about 34,000 feet above our heads. Here is the United States, North America. We're looking at the Pacific Ocean, and I want to point out the very strong jet stream, the strong upper-level winds across the Pacific Ocean right now, screaming towards the West Coast. And why is that important? Well, a snapshot of what we got over the, the North American uh, continent right now, we've been watching this ridge over Alaska, and the reason why we're kind of annoyed by that, this is a cold pattern for a lot of the Corn Belt. We displaced a lot of warm air to the north across Alaska. You know, Alaska's baking right now, uh, you know, in terms of their, their normal weather at this point in the year, and that's displaced a little bit of cold air across the, uh, the central and the eastern United States. But when we take a look at what's going to happen over the next 24 to 48 hours, we're going to begin quite a big pattern change as that screaming jet comes over the west coast, displaces and weakens that high, and we resume a more progressive pattern and a warmer pattern across the central and the eastern United States. What does that look like in the short term? Well, we're pretty quiet across the Corn Belt right now on Tuesday morning. The next weather system we'll be watching really comes into the picture on Wednesday and Thursday. That's going to bring some light rain or at least some moderate rain to some parts of the, uh, the central and eventually the eastern Corn Belt. We can step through this slowly over time, kind of resetting back here to early Wednesday morning. We head into the, uh, the afternoon hours. That's when we're seeing a light to moderate steady rain across parts of Nebraska, Iowa, maybe southern South Dakota and far southern Minnesota getting on that. Uh, no real heavy rain here. We're talking about maybe about half an inch from this. Uh, but of course, it's you know an, an ill-placed rain over the next couple of days as well as we really want to try and dry out this region that's been battling flooding conditions over the last couple of weeks. So uh, while we're not looking at any uh, significant rainfall from this Wednesday and Thursday system, uh, perhaps poorly placed uh, might be the way that we would describe that. As we head through Wednesday evening, heading into Wednesday overnight, we start to see that rain begin to move into the mid-Mississippi Valley, certainly Illinois and Indiana getting in on that, as well as parts of Missouri, eventually moving into Kentucky and Tennessee during the day on Thursday. And that's when we see a really, you know, a pretty disorganized system, uh, but it's going to bring those rain chances to a pretty widespread area here across the mid and the lower Mississippi Valley, watching some chances for some uh, stronger thunderstorms across the southern region as well, which Eric has updates for in the southern region forecast. But as we look at total precipitation through uh, Friday morning here, again, talking about maybe about a half an inch, maybe locally more across the, uh, you know, the borders of Nebraska and Iowa there. And then a pretty disorganized, you know, broad picture there looking at about a tenth of an inch to a half an inch across the mid-Mississippi and then into the lower Mississippi Valley. That's where you pick up a little bit more rainfall. But really from about Nebraska, Kansas, all the way across to Ohio, looking at about a quarter of an inch to about a half of an inch from this Wednesday and Thursday storm system. The pattern continues though, it's an active pattern. So as we get this system out of the way, here it comes. Here's Thursday afternoon. We're watching that rain track through the mid and lower Mississippi valleys. We see high pressure move in behind that. We're gonna quiet down for the end of the week and warm up quite significantly. We'll look at temperatures here in a moment, uh, but a really warm and quiet start to the weekend across the Corn Belt before we see the next storm system emerge here. This would be uh, midnight on Saturday night, Sunday morning. We're starting to see that center of low pressure develop over the central plains that's going to continue to organize and track to the east now how strong and how organized this low pressure system gets uh, there's been a bit of inconsistency uh, within that again with the uh, the intensity and the track there so uh, specific rainfall amounts who sees the heaviest where we see the chances for some thunderstorms with this is a bit unclear right now we'll have you know hopefully some more clarity when we give our friday morning corn belt regional forecast but as it stands now looking at sunday getting into monday and then perhaps lingering into tuesday across the eastern corn belt with that next weather system and then again, high pressure moves in on the back side, quiet down for a couple of days before we get out to the end of next week, looking now at Thursday evening, getting into Friday, we look at that next storm system developing again across the central U.S., moving into the Midwest. So uh, again, details on that one going to be even less clear than the uh, early to midweek or the, the storm system over the last half of the weekend, I should say Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. But I just want to give you a snapshot of the pattern. It remains active. We're going to trend towards a warmer pattern across much of the Corn Belt, but it's a, an active warmer period as well. So as we start looking for planting windows here, uh, you know, the good news is we are, you know, going to be trending towards a warmer pattern. We're not looking at an April like we saw last year, uh, but the bad news is there that probably the rainy days will outnumber uh, the dry days here, at least over the next 10 to 14 days as we head into the middle part of April. 
Total precipitation, just taking a snapshot look here over the next week from the European model. Uh, it highlights the, the more significant chances here across the mid and the lower Mississippi valleys. Uh, so when we're looking at the Corn Belt, we're talking about Nebraska, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and south from there is the area that I'm really concerned about seeing the repeated chances uh, for rainfall here as well. Similar look if we look at the GFS, the American Long Range Model. Uh, a little bit of a difference here if you look towards the, the north there across the northern plains, the upper Midwest, and southern Canada. Uh, and that has to do with uh, the rainfall coming towards the back half of you know next week. I said that there was uh, some disagreement there between the weather models, and that continues to be true here when we look at the differences between the European and the, the, the American Long Range Model. But the pattern is clear, it's active there across the central US, and that's gonna be problematic at least over the next couple of weeks as we begin looking at the planting window. Total precipitation in terms of a percent of normal, again, just kind of highlighting the uh, the problem spot there. Again, it's just gonna be over the central and the, the southern United States here as we deal with this very active weather pattern. Now we'll talk about temperatures to close things out here, looking at a, a snapshot at seven o'clock central time on Tuesday morning, looking at widespread 20s and 30s across a, a big chunk of the central and the eastern US. And that's cool for this time of year, but we're already warming up in a lot of areas. This is our 24 hour temperature change. So uh, comparing temperatures 7 a.m. Tuesday to what they were on 7 at 7 a.m. on Monday. And again, a large chunk of the Corn Belt here, uh, anywhere from five to 10, maybe 15 degrees warmer than we were yesterday morning. And that's gonna continue to be the trend. We can loop temperature anomalies here over the next uh, week or so. And really you can see the pattern there. We'll look at specifics in a moment, but clearly you see those cold anomalies being eroded and replaced by an overall warmer pattern. That's gonna have an impact on the snowpack across the Northern Plains here, where uh, luckily, you know, we, we wanna melt this snow without too much additional precipitation. And when we talk about an active pattern, uh, if, you, if you're looking at the Corn Belt, the Northern Plains are about the quietest place. So certainly chances for precipitation with each of these storm systems as they come through, but it looks like the heaviest precipitation is gonna be concentrated south of uh, the area here where we've still got some snow on the ground. And then we can loop snow depth here over the next week as well and take a look at what this warmer pattern does. It really begins to melt that snow pretty quick. So uh, if, if you've got snow on the ground there across the Dakotas, you know, we'll continue to watch the flood threat up there as this snow melt runs into the rivers and tributaries there and begins to uh, funnel southward through the Mississippi River. It's something we'll have to watch close. But again, best case scenario, remember that uh, precipitation snapshot. It does look like uh, the northern plains in the upper Midwest, at least for now, uh, remaining at least one of the more quiet places across the Corn Belt. Finishing up with temperatures here, we'll look at high temperatures as we head through the weekend, starting with our Tuesday snapshot or Tuesday high temperatures, warming up nicely at least across the, uh, most of the Corn Belt, getting back into the 50s, but it's later in the week here. You see that warmer air starting to inch northward, those 60s uh, beginning to creep into the central Corn Belt, especially as we get into Friday. Here we are, mid 60s all the way from the Dakotas across Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. As we get into Saturday and Sunday, warmer still, 70s across South Dakota, getting into Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, north of the Ohio River there. Sunday, the warmer weather beginning to shift east as we start to introduce a little bit of uh, some cooler temperatures in the north. Again, this has to do with that storm system coming in Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, but overall looking like a beautiful weekend for many across the Corn Belt. If you haven't already, go to my.nutrientagsolutions.com, set up an account there with your email address and a password. You can get access to the Weather Story platform here. Find all the content that Eric Snodgrass and I are releasing uh, five days a week at this point, so you don't want to miss out as we head into the spring. As always, Eric Snodgrass will have an in-depth look at the evolution of the next one to two weeks in our Thursday morning ag forecast video, and I'll have your next Corn Belt regional forecast for you right here on Friday. Have a great day.